r slash ask reddit what is the dumbest solution to a problem that actually worked i went to cancel a doctor's appointment and they said it was a 200 dollars charge without a week's notice i asked how much it was to reschedule they said it was free okay so i need to reschedule for two weeks out is three weeks okay yep all right you're all set for three weeks from now anything else i can do for you yes i need to cancel my appointment we need a week's notice my appointment is three weeks away oh okay sure thank you couldn't believe it worked edit well crap my most upvoted comment is a story about me conning some poor receptionist i'm a schmuck they lost in their own game mayo good job man I'll try this if something like this happens to me. Thanks. As others have mentioned the same thing works with hotels. It also works with internet companies. 2 year contract with Comcast. They tell me I have to pay an early termination fee. You can upgrade internet speeds and choose a new package without a contract. Then cancel. Worked for me. Comcast will let you duck them over in this case because game recognizes game. Ceterum autum sensia Comcast in MSE delendum. My stepdad was taking a sat nav back to the shop as it was acting strange but the bloke serving him refused to take it as the warranty only covers physical damage, not accidental damage. So he just drop kicked it lightly and the bloke just casually said that'll do sir and went out back to get a replacement. Wasn't too sure what to think about that. It's simple. The shop assistant gets paid enough to be there and has to explain himself to other people if the rules aren't followed exactly. But I not paid enough to actually care. My folks were in town, and my wife and I wanted to take them to dinner. We head to a nearby mediocre steakhouse at the request of my parents, and it's around 6pm. The hostesses tell us there's a minimum 45 minute wait. I get suspicious, as their parking lot had barely any cars, so I peek around into their dining area. There are several open tables that would fit a party of four. Mildly annoyed, I ask the hostesses why we can't be seated at any of these tables. They reply that they're being held for future reservations. I get on my smartphone, open the open table app, make a reservation for 6.15pm for a party of 4, and we're seated immediately. I've had that happen before too, but after booking my reservation I went somewhere else to eat. Cause duck that bullshit. This was before high speed internet. We had to transfer a database between two cities 500 kilometers apart and we had only one night to do it. People started searching how to compress the files and rent several expensive digital lines. I think I sp to spread the copy. Then someone said why don't we remove the hard drive out of the server and move it there by car. So I drove 500 kilometers during the night to deliver the disk and mount the new database. I was working as a paramedic at a music festival when we got called to a kid tripping on acid. The guy had climbed to the top of a portable generator stadium light. So he's 20 feet in the air, on a light pole staring into this blazing midnight sun screaming. I'm a moth go into the flame. We had several cops, firefighters and myself standing at the base for 30 minutes discussing how to get him down without killing him or us. The entire time a crowd of people on drugs is surrounding us to see how it all plays out. Do we get a ladder truck and try to coax him down? What if he won't go? Do we spay mace up there? What if he falls? All of a sudden this greasy looking janitor walks up, turns off power to the generator, turns on his flashlight and aims it at the mothman. Dude looks at the flashlight on the ground, scambles down and follows it to the medical rent like a puppy about to get a snack. I'm embarrassed embarrassed that none of us thought about that. I called about a pothole at the entrance of my store. They said since it was in my entrance, I'd have to pay for it. I called back as a concerned citizen and it'll be fixed in 72 hours. There was a nursing home in Germany and the patients with dementia kept wandering off. They installed a fake bus stop in front of the nursing home so when dementia and patients got out of the building, they would go sit at the fake bus stop and wait for the non-existent bus. The bus stop was clearly visible from the main offices, so whenever staff saw someone out there, they would just go and retrieve them. Solved the problem completely. Dementia wards in hospitals in New England, USA, are pretty common to have something like a bookcase painted over the doors to prevent the same sort of thing. Edit. No it's not a fire hazard any mentally competent person can discern it is a door. 
our family cat hated our family dog. Rubbed the dog all over with fresh catnip. New best friends. And here I am now. Wondering if I could befriend a lion doing this. Next year's Darwin Award nominee right here. Something similar. We had a problem with my dog just trashing all of her toys as soon as she got them. So we put a stuffed rabbit, or something, in a bin with our dirty laundry. She loved that rabbit because it smelled like us. Never destroyed it, just carried it around. Luckily it didn't go the other way and destroy all your laundry. I once owned a Subaru and drove a half hour away to a friend's house. On the way home, the brakes lost all their fluid. When I stepped on the brake pedal, the car just coasted. This was in the middle of a blizzard. Nobody else was on the road. So in my head, it made the most logical sense to drive it home right then and there, rather than wait for a tow truck during a blizzard. I took back roads and stayed in first or second gear, 20 miles per hour at most, and braked to a stop with the emergency brake. It was really easy in retrospect. Dumb, but easy. That's why it's called an emergency brake. It relies on a cable so when your car's hydraulic brake system fails, you can still slow to stop takes a lot longer. Only pointing this out because I've actually heard people say they thought emergency brake meant use in case of emergency like, you hop, an accident happened in front of me and I need stop instantly pulley brake. That's how you escalate emergencies. Back when I was in 6th form at school, we had new sofas in the common room, a room where our year could hang out and relax work listen to music on our time off. They had been there only a couple of days before one of the legs snapped off one of the sofas. Now we could have attempted to fix it, or just left it missing a leg but there were often checks and cleaners moving furniture would have noticed it was broken and we would have got in trouble for not respecting school property. So we did the only sensible thing, which was break all the legs off the sofa, and then all the sofas in the room so they were all at the same height. We stashed the legs in the ceiling, and nobody knew a thing. Nurses here will recognize this one. Once I was dealing with an extremely agitated and fearful Alzheimer's patient who had been sundowning since 3 p.m. Sundowning is an occurrence in some Alzheimer's patients where their mental function gets worse and worse as the day goes on once it starts to get dark. In a ho, this sweet old lady was having an absolute fit. All through my shift, night shift yay, I was running in and out of her room. The bed alarm kept going off. She was so confused, afraid, I desperately wanted her to go to sleep. Mind you I had 7 other patients. I finally walk her out to the nurse's station and plop her down in a seat next to me while I do my charting. She is yelling at me and throwing things. I've had it at this point and I'm running out of ideas. I finally look at her and say, how will I ever finish with a wash? My husband will be so mad when he gets home. Would you help me finish? She looks me right in the eye, clear as day, and says damn it sister don't you ever learn? Give me that laundry. Haha <laughs> so I grab a stack of folded towels and mess them up real quick and plop them in front of her. And she folded all of them. I would say oh look at that. She turned around and I would mess the towels up again. This went on a few times until this sweet lady just passed out. Exhausted from being so worked up earlier. And maybe from all the towel folding. I slowly push her in the desk chair down the hall and gently get her back into bed. She started to wake up and I leaned down and whispered. All the wash is done. You have nothing else to worry about. She slept throughout the night. We were both happy. I am the grandma whisperer. My dad used to be a nurse. He said that saying shh, the baby's sleeping works 90% of the time on Alzheimer's patients. My brother's mill has Alzheimer's and she would throw a huge fit over cigarettes and I finally broke and yelled at her. Susan, be calm now. Caroline is asleep. It had a calming effect on her almost immediately. She sat down on the patio in her favorite rocking chair and smoked that entire cigarette with a smile. Not a care in the world. I had a dementia patient who would get real angry and demand a cigarette a few times a month. Naturally, as a non-smoking facility, we could not give her one. Finally I cut a straw in half and colored one end with a red marker. Worked like a charm. She'd sit and puff in her cigarette for hours. Happy as a clam. Dudes pissing absolutely everywhere in the bathroom where I once worked. So the janitor put a little red sticker in each toilet and suddenly the problem stopped. Apparently men will aim at a target 100% of the time. If a target is presented, 
I don't remember where, but in some European city they fixed the cigarette end problem by creating an ashtray with two boxes, and a question. Who's the best soccer player? On one box there was Messi and on the other one Ronaldo. I remember it worked pretty well. That's why a lot of urinal brands have their logo in them. Guys will aim at the target, though, on the subject of urinals and ideas. Who thought these waterless urinals were a good idea? They're great for about a year, but then they get clogged up with piss and calcium. And the whole bathroom smells like stale urine. In Europe I've seen urinals where the target is a little life-size fly outline. And what makes it really clever is it's off center so it looks more realistic. You would need to have pretty bad eyesight to not realize that it's not real. But it just makes it more compelling to aim at. As far as waterless urinals. In my experience they aren't any nastier than regular ones. Off center also causes less splash. I read this somewhere so I'm not sure if it's true but. An airport was having complaints that luggage was taking too long to get to baggage claim. The airport solution was to move baggage claim even farther away from the gates. The complaint stopped because a lot of the time spent waiting was now spent just walking there. The actual time it took to get your luggage wasn't any faster. An officially recommended solution to a common problem with the Apple 3 was to lift the computer 2 inches and drop it. I did this and had it work. Owner of the machine never called me to do tech work again, but still admits it worked. I like to believe that they never called you because they concluded that lifting technology 2 inches and dropping it was a solution to all tech problems and so easy they could do it themselves. And so, to this day, they're dropping their iPads and iPhones. Possibly from ever increasing heights and the belief that the higher something is, the more likely it is to fix the problem. I'm really late to this, but, in my ecology class we learned about how there's a snake problem in Guam, particularly, brown tree snakes. The solution? Dropping dead mice laced with Tylenol attached to tiny streamer cardboard parachutes. Tylenol is poisonous to the snakes and the streamers attract their attention. It worked. The snakes ate the mice and it mitigated the snake problem that was affecting the native bird species. I was tested on this in my final exam. I like to imagine that for your test you were given a piece of fabric, some string, a box of Tylenol and a dead mouse. Probably in the right place for heart attack anyhow. We had a problem with an order so I wrote an email, from my email address. To customer support asking them on how to proceed. They told me that since the order was done in my girlfriend's name they couldn't give me this information for privacy reasons. So I just replied, still from my email address, with, I hereby allow Fragrant Vegetable to inquire information about my order. Regards, insert girlfriend's name here. Apparently that was proof enough for them to give me said information. Which actually was just to call a certain number. Why that information fell under their privacy policy in the first place is still a mystery to me. Similar scenario, me. I need to pay a bill for my wife. Wife's unisex name support. And what is yours me? Male name. Support. You are not on the account so I cannot take payment. Hang up and immediately call back. Get the same support person me. Hello my name is, wife's unisex name, and I would like to make a payment support. Hello wife's unisex name, no problem. Can I get the name on the credit card me? Mail name, payment made, edit, formatting edit to, change be gender wife name to wife's unisex name. Wrapping your Xbox 360 in a towel and leaving it turned on caused some of the ship connections on wiring to resolder themselves if you had the ring of death. Something daft like that anyway. I fixed the HDMI ports on one of my TVs by baking the motherboard in the oven. Yeah, when the towel trick stopped working on my 360, I started to put it in the oven for a bit instead. While it does work, it is not a good fix. Many of the red ring concerns were shifty solder, not shifty solder job. They used crap quality solder and didn't use enough which is ducking stupid honestly. It isn't hard to get the right amount of solder. The towel would create it enough heat to reflow the ship solder to get a good connection. But it would soon separate again as it was still ship solder and still too little. Some would work for years after. Some got a few days. Had to send in a letter once. The envelopes had no sticky adhesive and couldn't find the tape at home. 
My dad who's pretty much as old as Confucius just grabs a grain of rice out of my bowl and used it as the adhesive. It worked so well. Edit. Since people keep asking. It was just cooked white rice I was eating for dinner. Believe it or not this was a standard practice in India a few decades ago. One cup of rice every day during the kite season. Good times. When my dad was growing up in Brazil, him and his friends used to have kite fighting competitions, where they'd mash up rice, break out some glass, combine the two, coat the kite string with it, and attempt to cut one of the other friends kite down. We do the exact same thing here in India. There is a retaining wall in my backyard, the neighbor's yard is about 3 feet higher than my own, and the retaining wall is right on the property line. The wall was looking really shabby when I first moved in. So I asked the neighbor if he'd like to go halves on fixing it. I wanted something less ugly in my yard and, I assumed, he wanted to keep his yard out of mine. Dude refused and flipped the duck out. He insisted it was my wall, not his. The city disagreed, and that I needed to duck right off. So I told him that if he felt the wall was mine I'd be taking it down. He flipped me the bird. Nice. Two weeks later I have a contractor coming to give me an estimate on some foundation repair work. Nothing major. Some carbon fiber reinforcements to be added. I was also breaking up a small concrete slab on the side of my house not facing this neighbor. And so the contractor arrives. I go to greet him in the backyard with a sledgehammer over my shoulder. We had some brief discussions outside. Went inside and he did his thing. Then we talked for a while outside a bit longer. All the while I'm holding this stupid sledgehammer. Neighbor comes over 15 minutes later and is seriously freaked out because he assumed that I was about to take down the wall and was hiring this guy for. Well, something related. He agrees to get the wall repaired. At his expense. Because he really doesn't want me to demo the wall. In the end. He had the old wall removed and re-poured and I hired a mason to do some nice looking stonework over the poured concrete. I got a nicer looking yard and he took care of his dilapidated property all because I happened to be outside with a sledgehammer. Thanks for watching mate. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more high quality content.